What we want to do now is to introduce you to the star of the show this morning. Star of the show this morning is Sophie Anderson. Yes. Is. And the reason Sophie's the star of the show is what, Ruth? Well, she's a very brave girl because last November we received an email from Sophie and, well, I could tell you all about it, but what we thought we'd ask her to do is to read it herself. This is what Sophie wrote to us here on This Morning. Uh, dear This Morning, hello, my name is Sophie Anderson. I'm 12 years old and currently in hospital recovering from anorexia nervosa. I got ill a year and a half ago for a reason I do not know. I have been at a seriously low weight for the last six months and in August 2012 I got taken into hospital weighing just under four stone. I don't think people know that children can get this, this illness so young. I would love to appear on this morning to get my story and my point across and show people constantly on diets and exercise addicts that can start off harmless but end up being critical. I nearly lost my life to this illness. Beautifully done. Very good. That is the message. And Dr Dawn is here this morning, Dawn Harper here this morning, to talk about this. Before I talk to your mummy, uh, I want to talk to the doctor here because Sophie's making this point. She's 12 years of age and in so many of our minds, in so many of the literature that we read, it is only young women, teenagers and, and, and young women, who get anorexia. Not the case. Not the case. Uh, I think most people know that anorexia is more common in teenage girls than boys. Uh, but the age thing, I think, will shock a lot of people. And one of the explanations is that actually kids are growing up faster today uh, and the pressures that they are then put upon are, if anything, even greater um, in, a, in, a, in a still developing brain. Um, and so it is quite normal to become more body aware as you start to hit puberty. Of course it is. You go through all sorts of changes um, and people react differently. But I think Sophie's letter there actually for me says it all, is that it starts off quite innocent and then becomes a significant problem. Nobody wakes up one day and says, do you know yeah. what, I think I'm going to be anorexic. That's you know, not the way it works. Um, Sophie, that, that Dr Dawn there mentioned you know, the pressures of, of magazines and TV mm. shows. Did you feel that pressure? Because you say, you, you know, reading about you, you said you were only about 11 mm. when you started becoming body conscious. Yeah. Why did that happen, do you think? Well, generally like anorexics as their personality is quite like perfectionistic people, so they always want to be the best and look good and they just, that's like what they strive for, so they feel pressure anyway without anyone saying anything. So that's just, they'd have that anyway in mm. there personally without the magazines, mm. but the magazines and things don't uh, help. But somebody who will be uh, taking a lot of the pain and taking a lot of the blame and a lot of the responsibility is you, Mum, um, sitting there, Mary, and when did you first notice something's wrong here, this is just not right? I think the, um, apart from obviously the, the weight loss, which was becoming quite um, worrying, the most striking thing for me was to realise was, was Sophie's personality, the change in her personality. She went from being a little girl who was actually famous for her laugh, her amazing giggle, to not smiling, becoming very withdrawn, being in her room a lot, um, overly sort of obsessive actually about food, strangely enough, sort of looking things up all the time to see you know, uh, I later found out what the, what the calorific value was. You say later day. found out, and this is the problem, Mary, so many know. people we talk about, they say so many of those things you've described are natural things that happen with teenagers, yeah. spending a lot of time in their room, don't want to be around you, talking to their friends a lot, being not but secretive, It was very but dramatic, though, with Sophie. It kind of, it was almost like overnight someone came in and into stole the house, the broke in, yeah. stole her, mm -hmm. and then suddenly there was... It was very difficult to recognise the Sophie that we all love. Did you recognise any of the Sophie? It's easy to say now, but when you were in the middle of that, you were 11, 12 years old. But you're very smart and you're very aware yes. of things now, so I'm just wondering right from the start, did you realise was well, there Well, at the anything beginning it was like at the back of my head, because, you know, it's quite... Now it's quite sort of well-known in the media about eating disorders and stuff. It's always like in the back of my head, maybe I have one. But like if anyone ever said anything, it was like spikes would go up and I'd be like, oh, it's like the oh, thing. nodding to that. <laughs> did, you, did you confront her at any oh, point, Mary? Oh, many, many so. times. We all did. And, um, but we had to reach that, well, Sophie had to reach the point where she put her hands up and said, yeah, OK, I've, I've, got, I've got this. And that point was when? Do you remember how and when I'd that happened? i say that was about when I kind of... Yeah, when I got diagnosed, I kind of accepted it, and I was like, yeah, maybe this is a problem, which was in about May. And then you Thanks, were referred to a hospital, you were referred to um, CAMS, which is the Child Ad Adolescent Mental Health Service, which actually we've been talking about this week. Mm. Um, that all sounds like it was all getting very serious. Mm. Were you frightened then? Um, 
it's kind of like this illness makes you just live in a daze, like, because you, you lose your emotion, you don't feel anything anymore. So you just, you're just so stuck in your illness that you can't see anything else. But I didn't know not, what was Could happening. you not even see, all, you would just see those pictures there, but could you not even see the distress you were causing to people close to oh, you? Oh, yeah, like I could see that uh, my, like, my family were, like, losing the will to help me now, and that, like, I think deep down that was killing me, like, mm. killing me as well, but I just sort of, the illness takes over so and much. And it's not even, they weren't losing the will to help yeah. you. You start not knowing how to help, Mary. Yes. You uh, felt utterly powerless um, because every, there were just so many different, there were a few delays and then just not quite sure what to do until it got to the point where, where Sophie was really in danger so of losing Ill. her life and that's when everyone were well, you almost sort of relieved though when to get yes. that diagnosis to Absolutely. get her into hospital to get her been a relief. being looked after properly and then it was it was a huge relief although having to you know she had to be in a, a psychiatric unit for nine months after that and you said in oh, your gosh. letter to us i don't know why this happened to me mm. did you do you ever think you found out why with all that treatment you've had did it ever become clear why lots of people say like you have this it's just build up of loads of things and it's kind of like a coping mechanism. Well, Doctor, how do we make sure it doesn't happen to her again? She's at a good place at the moment. Yeah. Um, the first thing about any mental health disorder is if there's any good to come out of it, if you've had a condition once and you usually fight it and fight it, if it comes back, actually people generally are quicker to recognise it and to ask for help. So that's the one good thing. But I think anybody listening to this story, and you give your story so well, Sophie, um, parents listening to it worried. I think the warning signs, some of them were there, you know, being obsessed. Funnily enough, you're not wanting to eat food, but you become obsessed about calorific intake, often preparing food for other people very elaborately. The child who's always just eaten mum when they've yeah. come in, they've always just eaten. Um, if you challenge somebody, anybody, about losing weight, if they are losing it unintentionally, they're usually quite worried, is there something wrong with me? If they're losing it intentionally, they're quite pleased, that's a real compliment. So if you comment on a teenager or, or an individual who's lost weight and they are angry with you, that to me is a warning sign. And all those things, you know, it can just be one or two of them, but those are the sorts of things that I would say, you know, come and ask for help. You said something very eloquently, actually, Mary, about Sophie needed to need the help. You can't, until somebody is critically ill and on death's door, we can't force feed you. But that's what's um, so awful for parents like Mary, it's just that feeling of helplessness. What would you say, Mary, if there are parents, it's half term, you know, parents watching, um, children watching who might think they have a problem, what's the thing you would say is most important? I would say in retrospect, looking back, um, no matter how much they reassure you and say, no, 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 this is, don't, don't necessarily believe it and, and get help quickly. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, Sophie? You're the most important one in all this and you've come out the other side and you've recovered and you've been amazing today telling you your wrote, story. Yeah, you wrote that email. Um, somebody else might be out there on the verge of seeking help from somebody. Um, I think it is, yeah, just speak out, like, I thought if I spoke out it would be the end and it would be the worst thing, but it's actually the best thing that can happen mm. to you. Well, I'm very impressed with you, you're, you're, you're very smart, you're very together. Um, what, what do you want to do, you know, in a few years time when you leave school and you, presumably if you go to third level education or whatever, what would you well, want to do? Um, my dream has been for the last two years, I'm not sure this is probably maybe even sort of related, but I really enjoy baking. <laughs> and like, baking? Yeah. Oh, stay around oh. today. We've got some. What are we, what are we cooking? We're what doing we Halloween cooking? cakes. <laughs> Halloween cakes today, so yeah, please stay around. We're going to sign you up now, for junior isn't baking. That isn't that tomorrow. strange? After all she's been through, she, she <laughs> obviously has a healthy relationship with, uh, with food at the moment, which is... Which is tremendous. Well, we hope you can you can do that. Listen, and, uh, I'm sure whatever you do, you'll be very successful. You're an yeah. amazing young woman. Thank you. And Mary, you must be so relieved. She's sitting here telling us that story mm -hmm. today. I am. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So grateful. Yeah. And, and uh, she's you know she's been so courageous. So. Yes, she has indeed. She's amazing. Um, if you are worried, we've talked there about anything, any eating disorder, are you looking for some more help? We've got lots of advice and information on our website. And as Mary and Dr. Dawn said, don't ignore it. Just, you've got to face these things. Um, and talking of facing problems, we've got our agony aunt Denise Robertson's here to help solve some of your dilemmas uh, right after this break. Very wise advice. <laughs>